Okay, hello everyone. <clears throat> Today is Saturday, December 10th, 2022. I've got an, about an hour before I have to go to this conference, um, and the Lord told me to do this video before the conference. Um, I hope you're feeling alright, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I just got back a little while ago from uh, IHOP, which was a divine appointment. The Lord had me meet a young lady uh, who was hungry for the Lord, and so I was able to um, connect with her, and uh, so that felt good. But anyway, um, let's open in prayer, because the Lord wants me to do a teaching. Okay, Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, <sighs> Yeshua, will you please breathe into me afresh, overflowing, Lord, your Holy Spirit, your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, and circumstances. I ask, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that's not true and not coming from you, Lord. I ask, Lord, that all the words coming out of my mouth during this recording would be your words instead of my words, Lord. I ask in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, for your presence, Lord. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, will you please come and dwell here? Will you please just overflow out of me, out of my mouth, Lord? Um, I ask, Lord, uh, for your... Um, your revelation, your conviction, and your comprehension. And in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I release and loose and impart the revelation, conviction, and comprehension of the Holy Spirit of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. I ask, Lord, that you would override any shadow banning and censorship and that you would have this video, this teaching, reach everyone it needs to reach, Lord. I ask that conviction would pierce the hearts who need it. Okay, Lord, I ask for all these things in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Okay, so this teaching is definitely inspired uh, by the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but the Lord began, Holy Spirit began speaking to me last night regarding someone in particular. Um... And I began to feel this uh, this lack of peace, this actually dread of sorts. Um, and I said, Lord, what what is this? What am I feeling? And I kind of knew what it was about, but I, I, I discussed it with him. And it was about this particular person. And, um, and long story short, the conversation that I had with the Lord uh, resulted in him telling me to do this teaching. Okay? Now, I have touched on this topic before on my channel, uh, especially back in 2020 regarding certain um, inner healing modalities and so forth. Again, I'm not going to get into any specifics because I don't want to distract from the point of this message, okay, of this teaching. Because we're not here to focus on specific people and we're not here to focus on uh, specific inner healing modalities. That's not the point of this video right now, okay? Okay, so... As you can see from whatever I'm going to put in the uh, title when I finally post this later on tonight after the conference, um, I believe the Lord told me that the, the title he wants is this. Ministry is not a business. Ministry is not a business. I forgot to turn the heat off. Hold on. I'm going to turn that off so that there's no background noise. Okay. Sorry about that. So, teaching. Ministry is not a business. Now, this needs to be addressed in the body of Christ because it has become so prevalent, so prominent, so normal, okay? And, you know, we assume that when so many people are doing it, it must be okay. It must be approved. It must be, um, you know normal and acceptable and just because something is normal and just because something is overall widely found to be accepted or acceptable or even approved of does not necessarily mean that father god yahweh finds it to be righteous it does not mean that he approves of it okay especially now we are in the days of noah okay we are in the last six years right now wickedness is running amok okay so the Lord gave me four talking points, 
and he gave me some scripture and he even had me, he even sent someone to kind of remind me of some scripture this morning, so that was good as well. Um, I had them all pulled up on my computer, but the Lord said to just stand here because this is the best place to prop up my little phone <laughs> to record this. So um, I apologize ahead of time that I'm going to have to flip through my Bible to find some of these scriptures. Um, I have them written down, but I've got a million bookmarks in my Bible right now because of just different projects that keep getting put on the shelf and whatever, so I'm going to have to flip through. But I, right now, please do go get your own Bible if you want to get something to write with. Um, piece of paper, whatever, okay? But talking point number one, and this is the, the, the ma major uh, overarching point of this teaching, okay? Is Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. This is Jesus speaking, Yeshua. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, okay? Now, some translations, instead of mammon, it'll say riches or wealth, okay? Now, I did go and look up in, in the lexicon, the original language, what the word hate means and what the word uh, for mammon here means, okay, just to confirm. And the word hate here, as it, do, as it also means in other scriptures, um, is to love less, to esteem less, or it can mean to actually like passionately hate, okay. Um, and then I went and looked up the word for mammon, and it can mean wealth, riches, property, etc., okay. If you've been with me since 2020, you know that I have been exhorting you all to sell your mammon, get rid of your mammon, downsize, purge, um, you know, liquidate uh, so that you only have what you really truly need to survive, etc. Okay, now all of us have different uh, paths that God has for us. Um, some of us are going to be kind of moving around transiently, as apparently I have been, <laughs> evidently, um, over the last, what, 17 months or so. I had no idea that that, that that was part of what was going to be happening in my life, but here I am, okay? Um, so that, that exhortation still stands. Liquidate your mammon. Anything you don't really truly need, start getting rid of it, okay? Uh, but not to detract from the point of this message. Okay, so you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon and riches and wealth and property and profit okay business you know what i, I should have looked up like the official definition of business but l l let's let's just use some common sense okay common sense business what do people go into business for for profit for revenue right to pad their pocket their wallet their bank account okay their own personal finances even if um, now, I'm not an accountant. I'm not claiming to be an expert on accounting and finances down to the nitty gritty. Okay, but bottom line, that is the objective when one goes into business. Even if um, you are claiming to be a, uh, a 501c3 tax exempt, which that's point number two. We're not there yet, but um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But so that's the, the overarching verse that God wanted me to use for this teaching. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve two masters. You will love one and hate the other. You will be loyal to one and despise the other. Okay. Now, I was reminded this morning of a few other passages that I thought also connected. Let's look at Luke chapter 12, 21, verse 21. Okay. Um, so there's a parable here, the parable of the rich fool. Okay. Um, we can just read that real quick. Uh, but then one from the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, man, who made me a judge or an, or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take heed and beware of I'm stuttering. Beware of covetousness, which by the way, the Lord revealed to me recently um, that there is a spirit of stuttering. And apparently I've been uh, 
I've had an issue with that spirit. So the Lord has been starting to give me some deliverance on that. So hopefully my stuttering will stop. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. There's something to meditate on. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he, possess, he, he possesses. Mammon. Verse 16, then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. Okay, and this can be symbolic. Okay, back then everything was agricultural. Okay, but this is symbolic. This, this means your, your business or whatever it is that, that you're doing. Okay. The ground of a certain rich man, the ground and land means like your domain, okay? And that can mean whatever it is that you're doing, okay? And he, and he thought within himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to, to share my, to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will put, I will pull down my barns and build greater or bigger. There I will store all my crops and my goods. So he's hoarding, okay? 19. Now, in this context, it's hoarding. Yes, there is wisdom in storing things up, and you have to do that at the Lord's leading. Continue on. Verse 19, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 20, But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided or stored up? Verse 21, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God, okay? And there's another passage that I didn't bother to write down because we all know it. Um, and that was, actually, I think we're going to get into that here in a second. Yeah, point number two, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. But um, side note, I do just want to point out here how it says, how how Yeshua tells us that God called someone a fool, okay? So, um, yes, there is such thing as being a fool. Uh, there's even verses about that in the books, in, in, in the book of Proverbs. Um, but when Jesus said, you know, not to say, uh, Raka or you fool, he meant it in the sense of like gossip and slander, um, of like, uh, what's that word? To disparage someone to like be like abusive and like in the terms of like verbal abuse but there is a time and a place led by the spirit of the of god by the holy spirit where it is appropriate to admonish someone okay um and that may be more of a private thing because this context here of this parable it doesn't seem like there's any onlookers it's just this man and god okay so it's more private but the punctuating point here, or verse, is verse twenty-one. So he, so is he, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Okay, talking about storing up riches here in the natural, in the earth, wealth, property, possessions, mammon. Okay, you can't take it with you. It's worthless. Okay, that's the perspective that God wants to give here. Um, okay, then also. I was reminded of Revelation 3.17. <laughs> Again, this is Yeshua speaking. Revelation 3.17. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And then he goes on to say, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, um, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is about what is your priority? What is your God? Okay, the whole point that <clears throat> Matthew 6, 24 is making is there's only one God. You are to only have one God. You are not to have any gods before God. You are not to have any idols, anything else that you are prioritizing or worshiping, okay? And again, worship isn't just singing and, and dancing. Worship is whatever are you are prioritizing okay so if you're prioritizing mammon wealth riches profit revenue okay business that that's an idol okay so let, let's go back to the title of this teaching ministry is not a business you cannot serve both God and mammon okay when people claim that their ministry is also a business or their business is also a ministry they are in direct 
violation or contradiction of Matthew 6, 24. Because Yeshua, our Savior, flat out told us. The, the living word of God flat out told us. You cannot serve both God and mammon. And when you go into business, the objective of business is mammon. It is wealth. It is riches. It is profit, revenue. Okay? So that's point number one. Point number two. This is a rhema sentence that the Lord told me to share. He said, there will be no reward for business ministries. And he put ministries in like those like half quotes. Okay? There will be no reward for business ministry, says ministries says the Lord okay um, so let's go back to Matthew 6 on this Matthew 6 verse 1 through 4 take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. This is what, something that the Lord was highlighting to me. I'm going to underline this. Glory from men. Self-glory. Um, Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. That's what I was looking for right there. Yes, they, ha they already have their reward reward verse 3 but when you do a charitable deed do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing verse 4 that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly okay um the lord told me that this relates to the 501c3 tax exempt status that a lot of these quote unquote business ministries or ministry businesses have, okay? Um, and this kind of will roll into point number three, but um, which, and point number three that he told me is there are no examples in scripture of anyone having a combination business ministry. Nowhere do you see that, right? And of course, what comes to mind is, you know, when Yeshua said, you know, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, okay? Um, and he kind of evaded the trap that was set for him there. But I believe that the Lord told me that he is displeased with these business ministries, number one, but he is also displeased with this 501c3 stuff, okay? Um, and this now rolls into point number four. Let's, uh, let's go to 1 Timothy 5.8. Let me find it. 1 Timothy, excuse me, 5.18. 1 Timothy 5.18. Where does it begin? For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Now, where it says the laborer is worthy of his wages, that is actually referencing Luke 10, 7. Okay, so let's go back to Luke 10, 7. And let's read this in context, okay? Luke chapter 10, the subtitle I have here in my New King James says, The Seventy Sent Out. So let's just refresh ourselves, starting in verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed seventy others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. Verse 6. And if, if, if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, if not, 
it will return to you and remain in the same house eating and drinking such things as they give as they give thank you lord as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages do not go from house to house and then he continues on okay people love to quote first timothy 5:18 which again is quoting and referring Luke 10, 7, but they are taking it out of context to justify their sin, okay? To justify contradicting Matthew 6, 24 that says you cannot serve both God and mammon, okay? So let's refresh ourselves here. Verse 7, and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, as they give. Now, what I'm hearing Holy Spirit say right now is Hebrews chapter 7, what is it, verse 5, I think? That the sons of Levi, the fivefold ministers, the true officers that are, that are ordained by God, not by man, not by themselves, they are to receive the tithes and the offerings from their brethren, okay? Luke chapter 10, verse 7. Eating and drinking such things as they give. Who gives? The brethren whose house they're entering. Okay? The brethren are supposed to be providing the lodging, the food, the beverage, whatever they need because they are the officers of the kingdom traveling, excuse me, traveling, living transiently, depending on God and, and those who are truly in alignment with God so that they can do the, the ministry of the kingdom to spread the gospel, okay? But yet people justify charging, okay? This is all over the church, all over the church like a cancer where people are charging to do inner healing, to do deliverance, to do counseling, all of that, which really just falls all under the umbrella of inner healing, okay? Um, And, and now, and, and then we can also get into merchandising, you know, uh, people just selling stupid, you know, mugs and t-shirts and hats and stuff that just say some stupid, you know, uh, trivial, what's the word I'm looking for, Lord? Just stupid Christian merchandise just so that they can make a profit. And then we have people saying, oh, well, I, I would rather buy stuff from a Christian and, and you know, da 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 and, and okay, yeah, I, I get all that, that you want to support Christians as opposed to non-Christians or whatever and things like that. And bottom line, you have to go to the Lord. You should know scripture, number one. And number two, you have to have your own intimate relationship with the Lord and ask him what you are to be doing with your money, which is really his money because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, okay? Lord, give me the right words. There are no examples of this in scripture. Nowhere in scripture do we see anyone making a profit, anyone charging money to do ministry. Okay, this is an outrage. This is what outraged Yeshua to the point that he was flipping over tables in the temple. Okay? People in the temple were selling, you know, pigeons, birds, and whatever to make a sacrifice for their sins instead of you know, the temple being filled with people who are there to facilitate people getting deliverance from their sins and teaching them how to repent from their sins and all of that, which should be free of charge. It shouldn't be a, um, something that's actually encouraged because, oh, I can just go buy a pigeon and sacrifice a pigeon after I, after I sin, taking God for granted and t treating God's grace like a, a doormat. There will be no reward for business ministries, says the Lord. Hmm. Right. Yes. Okay. So let me circle back. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. I forgot to make the point the Lord wanted me to make. Let's go back to the beginning of Matthew chapter 6. Let's reread that again. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. I feel like I should pause right there. Now, I've already harped on this before. 
but it, it, it's worth harp, harping on again, okay? In our day and age, right now, in the quote-unquote supposed church, you see people, you know, taking video of themselves. Oh, look at me. I'm giving food to the poor. Oh, look at me. I'm trying to evangelize. Oh, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as, in the, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, and that, excuse me, that they may have glory from men. The Lord was speaking to me last night about someone in particular, and this person does run a business ministry. And what the Lord, one of the things that the Lord was showing me is that this person, um, is all about getting glory for themselves, self-glory, glory from men, from people, right? Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be seen in secret, excuse me, may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you op openly. So what the Lord was saying to me, regarding this 501c3 tax exempt stuff is that in a way if you think about it that in itself is doing things before men because you have to officially record that you have to officially report that um and it's become kind of a like boasting right in the quote-unquote church of like oh well you know i'm 50 what is it 501c3 you know and that's and what i'm hearing the holy spirit say right now is that that is false modesty false humility well you know i'm, I'm not all about profit but really they are about profit because if they weren't about profit they wouldn't let me make sure i'm phrasing this correctly if they were not about profit, then they would not have an official business and they were, there would be no need to make themselves 501c3. Okay? When Jesus sent out his disciples, the 12 and the 70 and, all, and us today, there's no business, there's no profit, there's no revenue. There's no tax exempt. There's no filing anything with the government. There's no connection to the government. It's just you depend on God. You walk by faith. You trust in him that he will provide for your needs and that he will lead you where he guides, he provides. And you do the work of the kingdom. You spread the gospel. You facilitate people's inner healing. You evangelize. You go and make disciples of all nations. Thank you, Holy Spirit. None of that has anything to do with the government. None of that has anything to do with taxes. And see, th this is what exposes the real lack of faith, the real lack of trust in God, the, the, the lack of dependence on God. But yet these people claim to be ministers of the gospel. But it basically is as if they forget that this is the God who rained down manna from the sky, this is the God who parted the Red Sea, etc., etc. But yet, where is their trust and faith in God? Why do they have to have a business? Why do they need to have profit and revenue? Why do they need to charge people for anything instead of just trusting that God is going to provide for their needs if they truly are an ordained officer in the kingdom? And, and, and if you don't like me punctuating the offices, the officers, bottom line, if God truly has called them, however you want to phrase it, okay, if, God, if it's God's will for them to be doing the ministry that they claim to be doing, where is their faith and their trust? Why aren't they walking by faith? Why aren't they leading by example to depend on God and trust him that he's going to provide where he guides, that he's going to provide for their needs to do what he wants them to do, what he's, trying, what he's doing through them? Okay. Let's go back to point number four. The worker is worth his wages. 
Let's go back to that. So Luke 10, 7. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. They who? The people of the house that they've entered into, once again, okay? For the laborer is worthy of his wages. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you char that as a minister of God, as an officer of God, that you charge for ministry. It means that the Lord, if you're truly anointed and you're in right standing with the Lord, see, that's, that's the thing. If you're living a repentant life, if you're living in righteousness, if you're walking by faith and walking in righteousness, in his righteousness, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be given unto you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 7, things as they give, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given unto you. What things? Your need for shelter, your need for food, your need for clothing, your need for whatever will be given unto you. Verse 7, things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. And then it says, it's, he says, do not go house to house. So let's think about what does that really mean? It means that you're not acting Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're not acting as a business. You're not trying to sell anything. What do people do when they're going house to house? They're trying to sell you something. Whether it's like literally like, you know, oh, I've got this bottle of water. Would you like to buy it? Right? Like, right? Or whether it's, you know, a doctrine, an idea, a belief, a good, a service, right? What do you do door to door? What is Jesus saying here? He's saying don't try to sell anything. It's not a business. There's a difference between evangelizing and selling. Thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you, God. There's a difference. There's a distinction between selling something, sales, business, where you're driven by money, by profit, by revenue, by mammon, by wealth and riches and property. There's a difference between selling something and evangelizing evangelizing thank you Lord now I know why he kept telling me to ask him recently to empower my office of evangelists yes Lord yes Lord evangelizing is when you are operating in the joy of the Lord in faith in trust in God to spread the gospel to save souls and nothing else is motivating you besides just the joy of the Lord that there are souls being saved there's no money there's nothing in it for you personally only exclusively for you that's evangelism thank you Lord Hmm. Thank you, Lord. And you know, let, let, let's go further. I know I, I, I addressed this a couple months ago, but it, let, if we continue on reading, verse 8, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe it off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than that city. The Lord is assuring you that as an anointed one, as an officer, as a minister, as someone who is truly walking with him and, and doing the kingdom business, being about your father's business, that if someone doesn't do what they're supposed to do, if they don't come into alignment with his will and provide for you and give to you and meet your needs as they're supposed to, he's going to deal with them. Vengeance is the Lord's. He's going to deal with them. And don't worry about that, that temporary momentary setback because he's going to have someone else right there as a backup plan and I can tell you from personal experience I've been living like this for over a year straight now and prior like three months prior to that I was homeless for two months prior to that okay I have been living majoritively in motels for the last 17 months paying my bills living in, in motels which is expensive eating out which is expensive okay I'm telling you right now yes there's been many people who have not come into alignment there was a guy hmm <laughs> Hmm, there was a guy, mm, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, <laughs> the stuff I could tell you guys. 
even though, yes, there are people who won't come into alignment who claim to be Christian, there, there are going to be, there are, there have been, there are, and there will be many people who claim to be Christian who have Yeshua on their lips, but yet they don't come into alignment with his will. They don't obey his commands. They don't live by scripture. They don't walk by faith. Okay. God already assures us he's going to take care of them. Don't worry about that. And in terms of your provision, he'll still provide. It may not be the same avenue, it may not be the same person, obviously, but he'll still provide. Don't worry about it. Again, where is your faith? As a minister of God, where is your faith? Ministry is not a business. My cat's making noise, sorry. Tigress, what are you doing? I hear you, but I don't see you. Sorry. Anyway. So, point number one, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and a, and a prophet from a business. Point number two, the Lord says there will be no reward for business ministries. And that is very much tied to Matthew chapter 6. Do I have, let's pull it up. What specific verse? Matthew chapter 6. Verse 1, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Okay, so that is scriptural and, and biblical for those of you who want to challenge that I'm giving you the actual rhema word of the Lord. It lines up with the logos word of the Lord, okay? Number 3, the Lord says there are no examples of this in scripture, okay? So if you're going to be a Berean and go study scripture, there are no examples. There's no examples in scripture where you see anyone doing ministry and doing it as a business because it's contradictory to the word of God. Okay? And number four, the worker is worth his wages. The wage, thank you, Lord. Yes, I, I need to finish clarifying this. The wages is not in the sense of you work and get a paycheck. It's not in the sense of you charge something and someone pays you for a good or service. It's that you are, in a sense, earning your keep by just simply doing the work of the Lord. By living by faith and doing what he tells you to do in obedience, you earn your keep. You God God pays you somehow some way. He will provide the lodging and the food and all your needs. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that you're justified to make your ministry a business or your business a ministry. It doesn't mean that you get to charge people for inner healing or merchandise the gospel. <sighs> what are we at here? 37 minutes. I gotta go freshen up for this conference. Okay, Lord, is there anything else that you want me to say? God. <sighs> I think that's it. As always, go into the description box underneath the video, okay? Um, I hope that lady that I met at IHOP today finds my channel. Um, YouTube recently changed it. It used to be a little like uh, arrow triangle thing that you had to tap on or click on. Now they just turned it into ellipses, which is three dots. Okay, you just hit that and the description box will open up. Always check the description boxes of my videos. Um, under my teaching videos, I usually put my email address if you have any questions or well, really, yeah, if you have any curious questions. Um, but, you know, in, in the description box, I will put, often, I'll, I'll put scripture, I'll put links. If, if someone else is saying the same thing, I'll put the, the link to their video or whatever there. Um, <clears throat> always check that, okay? And sometimes the Lord will kind of give me, like, a after thought or revelation. Um, so I'll put that in the description boxes as well, usually, okay? Um, I got to close out. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. And, you know, if you're led, please do share this channel, this ministry, because it is shadow banned and censored quite a bit. Okay. All right. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.